example, for someone who wants to stand their ground, be in their own sense of power, not negative power, but positive power, what advice do you have for setting boundaries? Maybe if it's for somebody you know, but somebody who's not done the work or is not prepared to do the work and is constantly trying to have these power struggles, right? What, yeah. what, what can you do in this, in this situation? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, first thing is like, we, we can take off the armor, right? Like we think this is powerful. Um, and then we walk with those, we're with armors. That is not powerful. This is prison, right? We're, we're walking around like waiting for the next shoe to drop for the next attack, right? Anticipating the next blow, sometimes sneaking in the first one, just in case, mm. right? But what are we to live, right? Like this is a prison. And, and like, we walk around in death cloud one, waiting for that next attack. This is power, right? Uh, this relationship to life is basically saying, no matter what happens life, I got this, I can handle this. That's a really powerful place to be. And it's really the, the power of vulnerability. Right, so going back to, let's go back to your example, you know, to our example about you being late. If the relationship doesn't matter to me, I can just say, all right, I'm not gonna have lunch with him anymore. But if it's a relationship that matters to me, I, I might, I would have to say something like this, right? And I'm just gonna say some words. We'd have to find our own words to communicate our truth. And so I would have to say, AJ, I, I really love our, our friendship and I love our weekly luncheons. And I gotta tell you, that every time you show up late, I feel right? disrespected, not cared for. I feel like you're valuing your, your time more than I, more than mine. And I don't want to feel that way. Can we try to do this a different way? That's actually a vulnerable place, right? Because you can say, well, screw you. That's your problem. In which case I know, right? Then that's not a relationship I want to spend a lot of time on. Uh, more than likely, and, and notice the difference, right? Rather than pointing the finger, rather than accusing, AJ, you're always late and you're inconsiderate and you don't care about me, right? That's what we, that's what we tend to do. That's coming from that place of ego, which is blaming and pointing the finger to that other ego that doesn't yet know it's an ego, probably. All that it can do, defend, mm -hmm. right? That's all it can do. That's all it knows how to do. And every time that we use words like, you always, you're always late, or you never do this, forget it. Like end of conversation, that little ego that doesn't yet know it's an ego might be looking you in the eyes, but inside is going back in time, back in time, back in time to that one time in 2001 where it wasn't late. It's like, wait, mm -hmm. that's not true. I'm not always late, right? So, so then it gets to be right. Um, so, so first of all, we can take the armor down. Like, like we got this. Right. And, and so how do, how do we, but, but intelligently, of course, right. If, if we're in a relationship that is not good for us, that is abusive in some way, like, Hey, we don't need to stay around. Mm -hmm. So, um, so how do we do this? I know. So, so that's part of what having healthy boundaries is realizing what works for us, what doesn't work for us, what, uh, what is good for us was not good for us. What, 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 you know, what kind of, what kind of life do we, do we want? And what kind of relationships do we want? So that's part of what that, that work of self-discovery is. 